I think has been made a lot of progress, mainly through the introduction of the three novel drugs, thalidomide, bortezomib, and lenalidomide. This was the sequence in where they introduced. But probably some people is too optimistic when they say that we have make a chronic disease and we are close to the cure. I don't think we are so far. I think we are working to try to make the disease into a chronic phase, but we have not reached yet this level. And this means that we need to continue to join efforts to reach this goal. I think that I was just speaking in the educational session about the treatment of newly diagnosed junk myeloma patients, and I emphasize that autologous transplant is definitely a very useful tool to reduce the tumor load and is associated with excellent quality of life, prolonged progression free survival, and from my point of view, uh, is a complementary tool to the novel agents, not an alternative. Uh, transplant has a limit, a limitation that is the tolerability in the elderly populations, particularly those above the 70s are not candidate to receive transplant. With, there are some exceptions, some people that is really very fit, but in general, transplant uh, stop at the age of 65 or 70. Now we have data that the combination of bortezomib, thalidomide, dexamethasone, or th uh, probably bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, plus minus cyclophosphamide, could be optimal regimes for induction before the transplant. Uh, you, you have now moved into the elderly population and our group uh, has been working now for several years trying to optimize the treatment of the elderly population. First, there was a pilot study in which we demonstrate that the combination of bortezomib with melphalanprednisone was highly effective. This was the, uh, the, the initial uh, idea for the VISTA trial and the VISTA trial has confirmed what we saw it in the pilot study, significant benefit over melphalanprednisone in terms of response rate, progression free survival, and overall survival. Moreover, in this meeting is going to be shown the long follow-up of the VISTA trial showing that patients at the time of relapse, after being, uh, after being treated with bortezomib melphalanprednisone, are sensitive to rescue therapies and in fact, they are not more resistant to the uh, uh, than the melphalanprednisone patients, and the survival from the time of relapse is even a bit longer for the VMP than for the MP patient. In other words, an optimized treatment upfront, such as VMP, is better than to start with MP and to keep the novel agents for the time of relapse. We have just been talking about the VISTA, but as you know, the Spanish group uh, has moved on trying to optimize the VISTA in two ways. First of all, to try to maintain the efficacy, but particularly to reduce the toxicity. And in this context, we have moved from the twice weekly dose to the once weekly dose of bortezomib. And what we have found is a significant reduction in the incidence of peripheral neuropathy from 13, 17% that was in the initial studies with the twice weekly dose, now is 5%. In this study, we have also compared VMP versus VTP, and we have not found a significant benefit for VTP in order to recommend this combination over VMP. VMP is cheaper and uh, is associated even with less toxicity than VTP. Thalidomide is a drug that is a wonderful drug, and we have been using thalidomide in combination with cyclophosphamide and prednisone for many years in Spain with excellent results. Now we have the combination of bortezomib, melphal, and prednisone that demonstrate that is highly efficient at diagnosis and does not translate into more resistant relapses, what is, I think is also a very important message. Uh, I would not recommend nowadays the combination of both new class of drugs, the bortezomib, the proteasome inhibitors, and the imids, either thalidomide or lenalidomide, because in some ways you are burning out 
the possibility of using the other drug at the time of relapse, and you are increasing the cost. This is different for the transplant setting. I'm talking now about the elderly. In the elderly population, my preference will go for using one class drug, let's say, for instance, bortezomib, meflan, prednisone, or lenalidomide, dexamethasone, or thalidomide, like cyclophosphamide, dexamethasone, one of these options, or MPT, then another option, up front, and to keep the other class of drug for the time of relapse. In the transplant setting, it's different, because I will use the combination, yes, for a short period of time, yes, three cycles, four cycles, and then I will move into the transplant. And I will try to have the most efficient combination up front in order to optimize the efficacy of the transplant. No. My answer is no. Cure is something that is a very important word just to not to try to be as much as strict as possible. There are a small fraction of patients that I think can be cured nowadays with the new approaches, including the allotransplant. But this is a small fraction of patients. For the vast majority of the patients, cure is not a reality yet. It's not possible just to answer this question nowadays because we need a, a, at least uh, four or five years just to realize if the benefit that we are obtaining in progression-free survival translates really in in into a prolongation in, pro in overall survival similar to what we expect. In other words, we have doubled by sure the overall survival in myeloma, but this is not enough. In my presentation today, I was dealing with a 53-year-old man, and I said that I asked him what was his life expectancies, and he told me at least to be 65. This meant 12 years. But then he asked me, doctor, will it be possible 75? Yes, like my parents, to enjoy with their grandsons. Is this too much? Um, this is something that should be the goal. The bottom message is that only the commitment of doctors and patients to work together in clinical trials is the only way that will make some of the new drugs available for the near future to all the myeloma population.